Okay, um, when we come to the neck area and the thorax area of the equine, um, certain structure of clinical importance that we need to stress on. For instance, if you look at the musculature of, of the neck, um, at the top, this is the splenius muscle, and it is huge in the horse, and the cododorsal aspect of the splenius, you can utilize it for intramuscular injections. Also, you can see the omotransversarius muscle, and as the dorsal aspect of the omotransversarius, you can see the dorsal branch of the accessory nerve, which is cranial nerve number 11, and while you are doing intramuscular injection on the splenius, you have to go dorsocodally to stay away from injuring the dorsal branch of the accessory nerve. So that's why you do the intramuscular injection on this cododorsal aspect of, of the splenius. This is the omotransversarius muscle, and you can see the dorsal branch of the accessory run on the dorsal aspect of the omotransversalis. Okay. Then you will see the clydomastoideus, which is the cranial extension of the brachiocephalicus. Um, this muscle extends all the way from the humerus to the to the head. Okay, it's very well developed, and you can see it over here. And the clydomastoideus demarcate the dorsal border for the jugular groove. And the jugular groove, this is the depression in between the clydomastoideus dorsally and the sternocephalicus or the sternomandibularis ventrally. In this depression or in this groove runs the external jugular vein that you utilize for venipuncture. Okay? This is the external jugular vein, so the dorsal boundary is the clydomastoideus, the ventral boundary is the sternocephalicus, and in the horse, you will realize that the tendon of the sternocephalicus will go and insert on the mandible. That is sometimes, and in some textbooks, they refer to it as sternomandibularis. So this is the jugular groove, if you look on the medial aspect, you will gonna see a muscle that you are not, you didn't encounter in dogs and in cat. This is the omohyoideus muscle. It's a very thin muscle. Let me show it to you from this side here. Is this thin muscle, this is the omohyoideus, that go and insert on the basic hyoid bone together with the sternum. I use this muscle, we can see better when we go to the left side of the animal. So these are the boundaries for the uh, jugular groove. Dorsally, it is the clydomastoideus. Ventrally, it is the sternocephalicus or the sternomandibularis. And medially, this same muscle here is the omohyoideus muscle. Now, when you come to do venipuncture in the horse, Usually you do it on the cranial aspect of the neck. Why that? Because the external jugular vein, as you can see here, it runs very superficial. It is just covered by the skin. At the start of the neck, the external jugular vein is covered by the cutaneous poli muscle, okay, which is this muscle here. It's coming from the sternum and it is going to the neck. Also this muscle you didn't encounter in dogs and in cat. So at the distal end of the neck, it is covered, the external jugular vein is covered by the cutaneous coli, while at the most cranial one third of the neck, the external jugular vein is very superficial and you can utilize it for veiny, for, for the veiny puncture. Now, um, once we are here, uh, let me draw your attention to the distal extension of the parotid salivary gland in horse. You can see it is very large and extend all the way to the cranial aspect of, of the neck. This is the external jugular. This is here 
is the lingual facial. This is here is the